what is the class of languages recognized by Turing machines? Um, that is to say, what is the class of languages L such that there exists a Turing machine M such that L of M, i.e. the language M accepts, is, is fancy L. Okay? Is it recursive or is it recursively enumerable? Well, if it's recursive, that guarantees the machine is total, that is, it always halts. If it's recursively enumerable, that just guarantees a Turing machine exists. And that, that's all we need for this. So what's the class of languages? It's the recursively enumerable languages. Um, I guess that's it. So it's either you, that was the question you really either know it or you don't. Note that it specifically says, answer the following question in one sentence. If we blather on and write a bunch of junk, we're going to lose marks here. Alright, if a language L is recursively enumerable, but not recursive, is the problem P sub L of L decidable? Uh, no, absolutely not. Uh, no. I guess I should write more than that. No, why? Uh, consider the language L omega, which is set of all machines and strings such as M of W halts. L omega is recursively enumerable, but not recursive, um, which implies PL is undecidable. Because decidable would mean the problem of a checking set membership is decidable if and only if the set is recursive. That to me looks like sufficient justification. Are decidable problems easy to solve? If not, give an example that's hard to solve. What's easy mean? Well, in computer science, when we say easy, we usually mean we can solve this problem in polynomial time. So, for example, string reversal. I can do string reversal in polynomial time. I can sort a list. I can compute a histogram. I can do a bunch of stuff in linear t in, in, cons in polynomial time. There's some things I can't do in polynomial time. These are called problems that live in NP, where, where it requires a non-deterministic Turing machine to, well, I mean, I lied a bit there. We don't know if P is equal to NP or not, but um, solving Sudokus is certainly decidable. You just brute force all the solutions until one works, right? It's definitely not easy, right? As the Sudoku grows in size, it gets exponentially worse. Uh, another example is the traveling salesman problem. Given, like, a graph with a bunch, a bunch of cities and a bunch of like, distances between cities. We want to know what's the minimum path that goes through all the cities. And just by looking at this kind of for a bit, it looks like it's probably going to be... Um, well, I have to take this path because I have to go through this one, so I have to do this at some point. <coughs> I'll take the one... Um, Take three, five, three, two. I think it's that. I'm not sure. Um, there isn't an algorithm better than just trying all the paths. So this is a problem where it's easy. Um, it's not easy at all, even though it's decidable. So my answer would be a traveling salesman problem. Uh, no. Traveling salesman problem. So basically, you just have to have a decidable problem memorized that you know um, probably doesn't take polynomial time to solve. So, traveling salesman is a problem that lives in NP, which is probably not the same class as P, but you know, who knows, right? That's the million dollar question. Literally, million dollar question is P equal to NP or not? 